Hello, bonjour, comment ça va? Today we're talking about the differences of using Oculus Sync with a USB 2.0 cable instead of a USB 3.0. Let's go! Welcome back to VR Essentials where we talk about the practical uses of VR. My name is Lazius Ken, that's right. Today we're talking about how Oculus have enabled us the ability to use our charging cable, which is a USB-C to USB-C 2.0 cable, as the link cable. I mean, how, how, what, 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 what? It's just amazing, right? I mean, the fact that we had to scramble, find the perfect, oh, oh, I'm just, it's just so crazy because we had to find the perfect USB 3.0 cable to work and we went through all the agony of the beta and things not working and then now finally things are working. What does it mean? I don't know, but honestly, frankly speaking, Link is dead because once 5G is gonna come out, everything's gonna be wireless. What does it mean to virtual desktop in the future? Perhaps it will be bought over by Oculus. Who knows, or Oculus will come up with their own platform. I don't know, but Link is the past, but it's great to be able to enjoy any cable in the meantime. But what does it mean? Is it really good compared to the official Link cable or for example, the Anchor cable and the Cable Creations extension put together, which is what I'm using at the moment? Well, this is why we're doing this video today so I can give you that information as I spend some time testing. All right, before we move forward, I just want to say a quick uh, note that about 40 videos wiped out from the channel. We don't know what happened to them. Maybe it's like an episode of after the loop or I don't know, Black Mirror or something, or we were uploaded to upload and something happened in the upload um, because I can't find the videos and YouTube can't find them either. They just poof, just miraculously gone like that for unknowingly reasons. So if you see the video, it says remastered at the beginning, the first three seconds, it basically means that those videos were missing from the channel and we're, well, we reworked them and we're re-uploading them slowly but surely. We did keep all the shout outs and the comments in the video, so all good on there. All right, we're back on track. Let's start the countdown. To get things started, you do it the same way as the USB 3.0, which is you plug the USB 2.0 at the back of your computer. If you go to the devices panel, you will see like an orange dot. And also it will say that if you use USB 3.0, the performance will be better. There's also like a little question mark icon. If you mouse over that, it will further state that if you use USB 3.0, the performance will also be better. Now, if you compare the same panel after plugging in the USB 3.0, everything is green. There's nothing telling you that you should use whatever other cable in order to make the performance better. Okay, so now let's explore what's better about one and the other. One of the first apps I tested was VRChat, simply because VRChat has so many different type of headsets you can use to get different effects. For example, if you don't have a PC VR, like you're using the Quest without the link, you cannot go inside a PC VR based made world and you cannot see PC VR made characters. In all the different worlds that I went into, including Shelter in Place, which is beautiful, really magical, has so many different colors. There's a lot of fog going around, there's a lot of particles here and there, and also quite a lot of NPU inclusion. And all this was actually coming out really nicely using the USB 2.0. So I couldn't really see a noticeable difference between the USB 3.0 and USB 2.0. And also I'm happy to report that I could actually show most of the PC VR avatars as well. So no difference is there. The gameplay was very smooth. Another app that I tested, which is quite graphically intensive, is Echo VR. Because when you use the PC VR version, there's actually quite a lot of fog and smoke and those kind of special effects versus the Oculus Quest, which got rid of all of that. And also all the textures are there compared to USB 3.0. Honestly, there wasn't that much difference as well. And I'm very happy to report that the microphone was also working without any glitches whatsoever. Just like in VR chat, the gameplay was very smooth. I'm also very happy to report that the microphone was working very well inside of Rec Room, also Alt Space and Big Screen as well. So no issues in any of the social VR platforms using the microphone using USB 2.0 compared to when the USB 3.0 launched, we had to wait all the way to Oculus version 15 to launch before the microphone would actually work on the headset. So it's pretty cool that there are no glitches at the moment using USB 2.0. Now things got really interested when I loaded Google Earth VR, which is super graphically intensive for the Oculus Quest. So when you load Google Earth VR for the very first time, you'll see at the UI, at the very start, it will ask you to click the trigger so you can load the VR experience. And it wasn't working. So I thought, haha, there you go, Google Earth doesn't work with USB 2.0. There are the limitations. But in fact, no, I tested with USB 3.0. It turns out the Google Earth simply has bugs at the moment and it's just not working. So if it doesn't work for you, absolutely normal. But there are some differences when using USB 2.0 for apps that are super graphically intensive. For example, Half-Life Alex. Let me show you what these are. 
The first thing is when I loaded Half Life Alex for the very first time, the settings in the performance was set to medium, yet the computer was telling me that I was running too many different things and that there might be some performance issues, which was odd because when I loaded the USB 3.0, I didn't have such message at the beginning, even when the performance settings were set to ultra high. Now, even though if you put the graphics side by side, yeah, the differences aren't super high. Of course, with the USB 3.0, I was able to put it on ultra high without any issues, which means the performance is much better than if you have it on medium, especially for special effects, smog, fog, you know, all these kind of things. The stuttering, however, was a bit more pronounced compared to using a USB 3.0. And then also the audio, there was some crackling going on every maybe 10 or 15 seconds. It wasn't super high, but it was just enough to make me uncomfortable to the point that, you know, I was like, no, I, I actually would like to switch back to my USB 3.0. So for really graphically intensive apps like Half-Life Alyx, it might be that there will be issues. And the reason why for these issues is, you, of course, you can do a test. You can test the cables and see how high the bandwidth and transfer data is like compared from one to the other. So let's do that. Before I share with you the difference in speed between the USB 2.0 and 3.0 on the Oculus Link, I just want to give a quick shout out to all those who went to watch and comment on one of the previous videos, which was all about Oculus Link versus virtual desktop using fighting clans. You guys are awesome. Remember to leave a comment below so I can give you a shout out in the next video. So if you're not familiar, Oculus launched a tool for us to be able to test different bandwidths and transfer data of each cable we're using when we're on the Oculus Link. So all you have to do is go to your device settings, scroll down, and you'll see it says USB test. Then simply click on that. Of course, you need to be hooked up to the Oculus Link with your cable first, and then click on the test connection button. Then just wait maybe 10 or 15 seconds. You may have to do it a couple times as sometimes it doesn't work and it will give you the data which you need to know in terms of data that it can transfer to the Oculus Quest from the PC, which is why that when we use the USB 2.0 in apps like Half-Life Alyx, there was some noticeable stuttering and also the audio which kept crackling here and there. So this would explain it. But for normal VR experiences like big screen or VR chat or all space and all these kind of things, then generally speaking, you'll be absolutely fine. Thank you for watching today's video. I hope that you found it useful. Remember to like and subscribe, share some love so that you and I together we can grow the community and help as many people as possible in virtual reality because that is what it's all about. All right, until next time, high five to you. Take it easy. As always, DJ, take it away.